and welcome to the Fiction Kitchen again. Tonight we're going to do something that's also a traditional Scottish recipe. Uh, now, stovies, originally, the stovies of my childhood, was something that traditionally got made at the beginning of the week with the leftover meat from the weekend. So it would be potatoes, onions and meat and gravy, essentially, cooked up together in a pan. But of course, we're in more modern times now, and so we have more options. Uh, some years ago, I decided that I needed to make a variation on stovies because we had a vegan in the family. Uh, and so I was trying to come up with things that were imaginative and tasty. And I came up with a variation on stovies that involved using lentils instead of using the Sunday roast leftovers and added coriander. And it doesn't sound like much, but it's actually a dish that's more than the sum of its parts. However, I have now retrofitted it to include a bit of chorizo and some chicken stock. So it's kind of headed back more in the direction that it started in originally. Uh, and I have to say it's one of the few dishes that my student son can actually cook from scratch. So it seemed to me to be the obvious choice when I was looking for uh, a recipe, a dish to give Karen Puri as a dish that had some, I suppose, sentimental value for her, a comfort eating dish. So I hope that uh, after you've seen this, you can go off and make your own rental stories and it will bring you some comfort. So we start with a piece of chorizo. Put your penny on. Oh yes. Sorry. Because I'm the one that's going to have to wash the stains off your t-shirts. Yes, yes. well, I have to wear a penny because I'm what's known in Scotland as a slitter. Which has nothing to do with serial killing. Oh God, I can't believe you made that joke. So, um, I take, this, take the, the outside off of the chorizo, uh, like so. You know, and, and this is one of these cooking programs that don't just come off in one, but I'll probably stand here forever trying to peel this off. It's because it's quite old, it's gone a bit dry. It's oh, past that's... its sell-by date. That's another wonderful thing about, about stories, is that you can make it usually with things that you've got in the stove cupboard or in the bottom of the fridge. Like a nub end of a bit of chorizo and an onion and lentils. How should I be without lentils? So there we go. So, I'm going to cut the chorizo up into three chunks. That sort of size doesn't have to be mathematically precise. The best thing is to avoid cutting your fingers in the process. So a little bit of blood's always tasty. Ow! See what happens when you look at the camera. I wasn't even looking at you, sorry, I was doing a close up. <laughs> Close up and you cut in my hand. Great. So anyway, as I was saying, a wee Are bit of just adds a bit of iron. It makes it actually okay. So, first step, take the saucepan. Again, I've put it on the ring. This is my hot agar ring, so I'm going to put this on sort of medium to hot heat in your, your, your kitchen gas stove. Not, not a wok ring or something that I, I, aggressive, but just quite hot. So it'll... Look, Fat will come out of the chorizo because that's going to be what we're going to do most of the cooking with. So the next thing, the next stage is the onion. So it's about this much onion, so that's like a really big onion or two wee onions or a medium sized onion and a wee one. Depends how much you precise. like onion. It depends how much you like onion. And as I say, none of these measurements are precise. Uh, most of my cooking was learned at the side of my grandmother or my mother. And, uh, my mother used very precise measurements when she was baking, but not when she was doing anything else. When I was a student, I rang up to ask what her recipe for soup was. And it essentially went like a handful of this, and a pinch of that, and a wee neb of this, and a neb of that. So, hence my Scottish broth is, which we'll come to in another day, uh, a variation on what my mother used to make. Because what my mother used to make, I cannot be precise about. And that's what my grandmother used to make, that's a mystery to me. So, now we're going to chop the onion, quite roughly we'll do. Mind your fingers. Mind your fingers. This is not like when you watch MasterChef and the judges go, amazing knife skills. Well, if you stopped talking, I could have done it in a uh, super fast time, but that makes you that makes you sound like a chipmunk. Well, we'll do the other half without talking. See, I'm not the world's tidiest cook, but hey, you know. So, 
shoot a little sweat and down a wee bit by now. And I'm going to add the onions. I've got one of these wee scraper things in here, haven't I? Yes, I have. One of these very handy things, which was a gift. I'm going to drop a name now. It's a gift from Nick Nairn. And this is supposed to make it neater and tidier when you put your vegetables in the pan, but as I say, I'm not the world's neatest and tidiest cook, so there's all those bits that go astray, but hey, three second rule. So, I'm going to let the onions and chorizo come away here for a wee bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to throw more things on the stove top and cut the potatoes up. Now, traditionally, stoves are made with the kind of potatoes that fall apart a bit when you cook them down. So the floury potatoes that you use for mashing and roasting. But with lentil stoves, because the lentils go to, go to mush really and, and disappear into, the, they lose their identity basically. Uh, I use the kind of potatoes, like new potatoes, that don't go down to mush. Uh, so the potatoes still retain their identity and it gives some texture to the dish. can't believe I'm saying things like this. People who know me will be wetting themselves round right about now. It gives more texture to the dish, you know. It's the idea of potatoes retaining their identity. Yeah. Well, you know, you have to watch the identity theft. It's a, a real problem in science fiction these days, identity theft. So... I'm going to go chopping the potatoes. And then we're again. Give the onions and the chorizo a wee bit of a rumble. Onion will be starting to soften. Chorizo will be giving out more fat. It's all doing very nicely. Obviously, you make sure there's no nasty bad bits on them, but generally speaking, I'm told by people who know about these things that most of the vitamin C in the potato is actually in the skin, so it's quite good to eat it on. We've got all this last toffee. The amount I'm making today uh, should do two relatively hungry people or one ravenous greedy person. Talk no one could eat that much. <laughs> you don't have much experience with teenage boys, do you? Right, so the onions start to soften. All coming along very nicely, and I think it's about time that I add the potatoes to the mix. Who said you could stir? You always tell me I'm stirring. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. That is in with the mix, and everything essentially just gets, as we say, rumbled about together. Not many people know this, but Stuart McBride, a fellow crime writer, is the world Stovies champion. Uh, and I know he would be very upset by this version of Stovies. In fact, I know he's very upset by this version of Stovies because we've had the conversation. He thinks it's not Stovies without lamb in it, but you know. Can't have everything in this world, Stuart. So we'll let that do away a wee bit. So, so that's starting to sound quite cheery. And I'm just going to move across the kitchen to put the kettle on. Now we do have a sink full of foraged wild garlic, which will doubtless appear on another occasion. So the next thing that goes into the pan is the lentils. Uh, these are traditional red lentils, 
No Scottish home, no self-respecting Scottish home should be without them. And as you'll see, we're going to have a very carefully measured amount of lentils going into the pan. So that'll be one handful, two handfuls, and because it never looks enough, a wee bit more. And you've got quite the hands. This is the point where we have to add the liquid because lentils, of course, need to be dehydrated, reconstituted. Oh, and by magic, to look the kettle of boiling water has appeared. Here's one I prepared earlier. Yes, just like blue pizza. So that's added to just about to cover things in the pan. I also add a stock gel like this. I need a chicken one because it's fairly generic. Um, but you can, of course, use any other kind of stock that you, you choose. And if you're going for the vegetarian vegan version, there are many vegetarian and vegan stock options available. So you can carry on making this without offending the members of your family who have chosen an alternative form of life. Probably best to keep the chorizo out as well. Aye. <laughs> Could you add other things like mushrooms or spinach? How would you want to do that? Chilli powder? No, no, don't be ridiculous. My, my filmmaker is of the view that you can always add more ingredients to make something better. I am of the view that some things have a certain amount of ingredients because that's what makes them taste nice. So at this point, put in some of the coriander. As you can see here, you know, probably scant, very scant handful of coriander goes in at this point. Love the smell of fresh coriander. That goes in the pan. Eat everything else. Then we can stir it all up. See it's starting to come through the boil nicely now. I'm going to add a bit of salt and pepper as well. Because presentation is everything. That would be where I would fall down in any kind of cooking competition, would be the notion of presentation. Yeah, I can imagine what you'd say to John and Greg if they decided yeah. to criticise your presentation. Yes. Yes. That's what it tastes like, as far as I'm concerned, not necessarily what it looks like. So that is your actual stovies. And they're now going to go, because I have a, a naga, I'm fortunate enough to have a naga. This is going to go in the bottom of the naga for about 20 minutes or so. Uh, if you're cooking it on the stove top, put it on a very low heat, just a nice wee gentle simmer until the lentils start to lose their integrity and the potatoes are cooked through. And at that point you can serve it with sprinkled coriander. But for now, I'm putting it in the bottom of them. Lentils without integrity and potatoes without identity. This is... This is high bread cooking. There we are. And now the moment of truth. How have Cabin Fiddy's stories fared? Let's take a look and see. Well, so far so good, bubbling away nicely. Oh, oh, oh that looks lovely.
until it's remaining on top go integrate it into go integrity mm. oh it's gorgeous mm -mm -mm. Mm. that's so, a reaction shot oh it's gorgeous and now the final moment is just as we come to the shop sprinkle the rest of the coriander on top and just stir it gently through. And there it is, can for these scobies. It is genuinely more than the sum of its parts. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I'm having for my tea tonight. The book where Karen Perry eats her plate of scobies is Broken Ground, the fifth novel to feature the cold case detective, and this is where it actually comes in. On the long drive south, she'd kept running over how Rory Macaulay had spoken about the dead man. Warmth, affection, regret. All markers for loss, and nobody understood loss better than Karen. It was, she decided, a night for comfort food. Potatoes and onions from the fridge, coriander leaves from the freezer, red lentils from the store cupboard. She chopped the onions and threw them in a pan with a slug of olive oil, then diced the potatoes and added them. A couple of handfuls of lentils, then boiling water to cover the contents of the pan. She remembered to add a chicken stock gel, then chopped the coriander. Half now, half when she was about to dish up. Lentil stovies had been her own invention when she'd lived alone, and in spite of Phil's reservations as a red-blooded carnivorous Scotsman, it had become his favourite scratch supper. The sensible Karen knew it was daft to find significance in lentils and totties. But the emotional Karen couldn't deny that she felt Phil's presence when she ate the food they'd enjoyed together. She didn't care if it was sentimental nonsense. There was nothing maudlin about it. It simply revived the good memories of the time they'd had together.